Now let's sign, dive into yesterday. Big signing, Deshaun Elliott, a name that was very much so not on many people's boards. There were so many names out there. Justin Simmons was the big one, obviously. He's still floating around somewhere. 26 years old, he'll be 27 at the start of the season. 50 games of starting experience last season. He had 82 tackles. He's got a career high or a career of 287 tackles, three interceptions each year. The past three years landed an interception comes from Baltimore, Detroit, Miami. The word I got to describe him yesterday when I spoke to somebody in Miami was dudes as physical as it comes. Maybe that's what the Pittsburgh Steelers need. Your thoughts when you saw the signing. Yeah, I mean, Look physical. That sounds like a Steeler. That's a that's a buzzword we like. Um, I I love that he's young. Um, I love that it's it's two years, six million dollars. That's dirt yes. cheap. Uh, for this team, um, like I said, he's young uh, and he's productive. Um, this guy, you know, eighty two tackles over fifteen games, a pick and seven passes defended. Uh, I mean, I, I think this is also a good kind of. Mm, I don't know what the word. But it's a good fit alongside Minka Fitzpatrick. I think. Um, yes. I think. You get a guy who can play in the box a little bit more, more of a strong safety as opposed to a free safety. You let Minica Fitzpatrick play in that role that I think we've talked about a bunch before where he's at his best in that center fielder role um, where he can make plays on the ball. He can kind of uh, play with his instincts and kind of let his instincts run wild. I think that's the best fit for him. Uh, And if he's able to do that, um, you know, with, with Deshaun Elliott there, who can, who can fill in a different role. Um, It it was, you know, I saw that name, you know, I saw the name pop up. I saw the alert. I saw, you know, people talking about it and I was like, oh, you know, a little underwhelming, you know, especially yes. when Justin Fields, Jordan, Jordan Poyer, Micah Hyde, and I'm going to, you know, forget some of the other safeties that were, that were available, but there were big names available. Um, and I was hoping the Steelers would take a swing on a guy like that. But um, if you're looking for more of a budget option, a value option, I, I think Elliot is a great, great pick. Um, and I think, like you said, the more you dive into, what this guy has done and what he's produced. Um, this looks like a pretty ideal fit for the Steelers and, uh, and yes. a good pickup, especially at the price and especially at this, at this guy's age. Yeah, I agree. Look at you. You looked at Justin Simmons and that was obviously like, that was the key. That was the boom. That was go get Justin Simmons. Everybody wanted Justin Simmons. There were other names out there that probably were almost just as, as expensive. The problem with that. And the only problem that you had, continuously i mean me i've talked about this every single day on the podcast when it came to justin simmons is you're gonna pay your safeties 30 million dollars with justin simmons and 30 million dollars for some safeties is crazy like that is there are a lot of positions where you will pay a lot of money for more than market value safety is just not one of them it never has been there are not a lot of teams out there that spend as much as the pittsburgh steelers spend on defense let alone one position that was the only that was the only issue to get somebody, maybe a second tier free agent, maybe even a third tier free agent for $6 million. I think it's like, I don't know what the exact details of the contract are. I haven't seen them yet, but I would imagine it's under a $3 million cap hit in 2024. That's, that's good. That solves that one issue that you had. And to be 27 years old by the start of the season, to be a sure tackler. I think that's the biggest thing here is yeah, he, he fits well next to Minka Fitzpatrick because he allows Minka to to play where Minka plays best. And that's not what the Pittsburgh Steelers had in mind. And maybe something along the way changed, but they have been trying for years to make Minka Fitzpatrick just a Troy Polamalu. Go all over the place, do whatever you want, make some noise. And I think he he does that well. You know, he's Minka Fitzpatrick. He does everything well. But I think his best game is making plays deep, making sure nothing gets behind him, and just being that lockdown safety where, sorry, but you cannot, you're not going to throw deep because I'm going to come up with the football. I think that's the best case scenario for the Steelers. They needed somebody who could tackle. They desperately needed somebody who could tackle. We went so many games last season where you're watching replays and Patrick Peterson is just like backing off guys. Joey Porter Jr. is missing tackles. DeMonte KZ is missing tackles. You needed somebody so desperately who can tackle. Deshaun Elliott might be the most pure tackler in the free agency class. So I think that that is a perfect fit. When it comes to where he'll play, I think a lot of people have questions about that. Is this a backup? Is he a starter? He's a starter. I would see DeMonte KZ falling into that third role and using that as the rotation. And I think that that works very well because I think the Steelers love what DeMonte KZ brings as that third safety. This guy is this guy's a Terrell Edmonds and probably an upgrade over Terrell Edmonds just because he has a little bit more going on. 
Yeah, yeah. And I think he's, you know, he seems like he's, mm, I don't know if a better, I think he's a, more, a little bit more of a complete player than, yes. than Terrell Edmonds was. Like, it seems like yes. he's a better pass coverage guy uh, than Edmonds was. Like, I like Terrell Edmonds, but I think this is this is definitely an upgrade. I'm I'm like, I don't know. The more I think about it, the more I'm kind of shocked that the Steelers got him on this kind of deal. Like, yeah, I know the safety market's rough, but like, this is six million dollars over two years for a guy who's gonna gonna start both of those years for you. Like, he's gonna play. You know, this guy is clearly uh, pretty durable. Uh, played you know twenty nine games over the past two seasons. Like, he's available. He's productive, and he's gonna be really cheap. Like, this is. Uh, this is a great signing. I don't know. In my opinion, um, I, I, yeah. I think he's clearly an upgrade over. I like. I like Demonte Casey too. Um, but I think Demonte Casey is also one of those guys where if you're asking too much of him, um, yes. you're you're going to end up getting disappointed. Um, yes. So I think you know, let him be a little bit more limited, uh, and letting letting Elliot kind of be your starter, be the anchor of that, and in that back end, um, I, I think is so valuable. Um, and. I just can't get over two years for six million dollars, man. Like that's that's a really good deal, man. That's like uh, that's that's really really good for a guy who's gonna gonna start at safety for you. The Steelers have done that with every position. I mean, think of Omar Khan is a genius. He's a genius. There were I I read reports or not reports, but like people, and I get it. Like you know, at some point ESPN just became something that you were just gonna look at and go, I disagree with most things that come out of your mouth. There are a lot of national things out there that you kind of feel the same way about. I'm, there are a lot of people that feel the same way about us, but there was a lot of people talking out there about how Omar Khan stinks. A lot, of, nobody, no Steelers fans, but a lot of national people talking about Omar Khan's not doing enough. He hasn't done enough. I don't know how much faith I have in Omar Khan. Omar Khan's a genius. This guy is phenomenal. I mean, he signed Deshaun Elliott for a bargain yesterday while scouting Clemson's pro day. The guy wasn't even in the office. Like, yeah. dude knows what he's talking about. That front office around him knows what they're doing. When it comes to contracts, man, he is a wizard. He is the con artist. Con artist continues to strike. To get that, to get Patrick Queen for less than market value, to get Russell Wilson for $1.2 million, I mean, just unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah, and I, I think the thing that's, that I respect the most and, and uh, I think one of his best attributes is it always seems like there's a plan, you know? Yes. Like, you watch guys fly off the board, but, uh, you know, the st- and you think the Steelers are falling behind and you think that they're they're missing out on opportunities and then they make their next signing and you're like, oh, OK, that was pretty good. I mean, they, there's yeah. like a there's a I mean, maybe it wasn't their first plan, but there is there is someone uh, there's always a plan B. There's always someone that they can say, look, we can fall back on this guy. He might not have been our first option, but he is going to be quality. Uh, he's a good value uh, for us. Like they're never. I don't think there's ever going to be a reason to panic, you know, if the Steelers miss out on a certain free agent or a certain guy in the draft, like Steelers are going to get someone valuable. They're going to get someone uh, who can contribute to that team under, under Omar Khan. They're not going to, I don't know, maybe they're not taking as many big swings as people would want, but uh, I don't know. They're getting good value and they're, and they're building a solid foundation for this team. I agree. I agree. That's why, I mean, we're going to talk about wide receiver here in a minute, but that's why when it comes to the wide receivers, it's just like you don't trade Deontay Johnson unless you know what's going to come next. You know, I don't care how backed into a corner you are. You don't trade Deontay Johnson unless you have a plan. And I think the Steelers have a plan. 